Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Jim. And if you're new here, I'm Jim, uh, I guess. And um, I'm making tutorial videos about Luminar Neo. And uh, uh, last couple of videos, I've been going through the different editing tools, kind of each group. I did Essentials and then I did Creative. This one is about Portrait. There are five tools in Portrait. It doesn't mean, of course, you can't use other tools because you can. And one of the great things about Luminar is that you have a flexibility to use all these different tools to the extent that you want to. And with Neo, you can use tools again and again, which is also cool. One of the nice things about the portrait tools is out of those five of them, four of them are driven by AI, which is super powerful and super cool. I'm gonna be walking through that in this video. Let's take a look at it. Uh, this first one here is a portrait, uh, and I'm gonna just go through these in order. The first tool is Portrait Bokeh AI. And I know I may not pronounce the word Bokeh correctly. I think it's Bokeh, Bokeh. Uh, I hear it differently. I say bokeh. You know what I mean, that soft, blurred, beautiful background. And this one already has some, but the uh, the amount slider is what you do. And you just drag that to the right and you will see your bokeh basically increase in the background. And so it does an amazing job of isolating the subject and allowing it uh, to automatically blur that background. And in fact, if you come and hover your mouse over the image, you will see that it's automatically selected the subject and Therefore, it's blurring the stuff behind her. So you have the ability to adjust accordingly. You also have some controls here for focusing or defocusing, which allows you to paint additional pieces of the uh, mass. So if you wanted to, you could paint in here. If you wanted to create that as part of the focus area, or if you mess up, you can just come back with defocus and then just go ahead and paint over that. So if, for example, if the mask around the girl was not perfect, you could adjust it with those tools there. Now there's also background uh, controls. So you've got the ability to adjust the brightness of the background. I'm gonna darken it a little bit. I'm gonna maybe give it a little bit of highlight glow. I'm gonna cool it off. So make it a little, little bluer, if you will. You've got depth correction here, which I'll just show you what this does. As I drag it to the left, you can see kind of creating more of that blur. And then it's also further into the photo, or I should say closer, where I drag it to the right, it's further back. So that depth is allowing you to pull that bokeh forward or push it backwards. And then edges correction is for the mask itself. The only thing I want to point out here and again, like every editing uh, photo or session tool, it's season to taste, but just be careful because if you really do a whole lot of stuff here to separate your subject from the background, which is the point really of having that blurred background is to get some separation. But if you do so much, you'll get so much separation that it will look like you composited her, like you took a picture of her and cut and pasted it into a different background. There's nothing wrong like uh, with doing that, a lot of people do it, and it's cool. Just be careful because you may not have a situation like that, but if you create too much separation between your subject and that blurred background, it could look kind of fake is all I'm getting at. However, super powerful controls, uh, amazing tools that allow you to quickly take a photo, you know, honestly, a fine photo, something like that, and turn it into that. Lots of fun, lots of control. Let's jump into the next tool. Okay, Face AI is the second one, and as the name implies, it's all about the face. So uh, in this one, Face Light, it just it really just does an amazing job of being able to isolate that face and provide some additional light. Slim Face, now, you know, the thing to think about with some of these tools, because they're AI, they do allow you to do some slimming. Again, be careful. And my personal opinion is you don't want your subject in the photo to look that different from your subject in real life. But you can uh, adjust accordingly. The cool thing here is you can change eye color so I can make her eyes blue if I wanted to. I can add a little flare to the eyes. I can enlarge them. Um, again, be careful with that. I think the enlarge eyes actually works really well. If somebody's kind of squinting, it helps to open their eyes a little bit. But if their eyes are totally shut, it's not really gonna open the eyes. I've had people ask me about that. Eye whitening, you can see that uh, basically whitening her eyes there. Eye enhancer is a little bit like clarity, I think. Um, it isolates those eyes and really gives it a nice little sharp pop. The red eye removal, I think, is obvious. Dark circles, not really necessary here. And improve eyebrows. You can see that it darkens up her eyebrows considerably. So powerful stuff. Um, you know, I like that the top section is f basically the overall face. And then you get into the eyes. And then you get into the mouth down below. Uh, all pretty self-explanatory. Lip saturation, redness, darkening. There is teeth whitening. Her teeth are not showing. But once again, you can take a look. There it is before. And there it is now. Very powerful 
control and ability to customize the look of your subject in, uh, you know, in the image with all these powerful tools. So Face AI, great tool. And again, if you have multiple faces, uh, you could use this tool. And then because Neo allows you to reuse tools, you could go back in and use the masking to mask it into specific areas. So you can mask it in on this one. And then if you had two people in the photo and you wanted to do something different to the second person, you could do that. I'll come back. If you would like more portrait videos, let me know. I'm not really a portrait person, but I have been taking more. By the way, the portraits I'm using today are by various artists on Unsplash, and I will put their links down below. But I'll come back and do more portrait videos. Let me know if that would be interesting to you. But again, powerful control and uh, you know impactful results in just seconds, honestly. So there it is before, and there it is now. Let's go on to the next tool. Okay, next up is Skin AI, and again, uh, it's it's pretty clear what this is about. So Skin AI is basically some smoothing. So this is a person who, I love the look of this person, to be honest, I would not want to do that, but it's a good photo uh, to make an example of how this tool works. So as I drag this to the right, you can see it's basically taking some of the lines uh, and you know some of the, um, I don't know what the word is, but some of the character, for lack of a better word, and it is smoothing it out. So that is something that you can use. Again, I, I recommend going a bit sparing with that, especially if they already have fairly smooth skin. If you use a lot of it, it could start to look plastic, so just be careful. Um, and I think shine removal is fantastic. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and drag that. If you look like right around the end of his nose and the uh, kind of the lower part of his cheeks, as I drag this to the right, you can see it's basically, it's just pulling the shine off of that. So it's allowing you to get a better balanced light um, distribution on the face, which I think is powerful. And then skin defects removal is just a checkbox. If you click on that, it will uh, go in and detect things. So if you look before and after, there's a few different spots and it's removing them. Uh, you can also do this similar thing with the eraser tool, of course, where you can come in and erase things if you want to. Um, so you can quickly have an impact on somebody like this. There it is before and there it is now. And again, like everything, season to taste, but that is skin AI. Now I'm gonna jump into body AI. Okay, body AI, as the name implies, is all about the shape and the size of the body, essentially. So the shape, uh, you can just go left and that will expand. And if you go right, that will effectively contract the shape of the body. So again, season to taste, be careful. And my personal opinion is, you don't want your subject in the photo to look vastly different than your subject in real life. If I'm doing a selfie, I might overdo it a little bit, but um, for professional work, I, I would say season to taste, but be careful uh, depending on how creative uh, you or your subject wants you to be. Uh, but that's, I think, fairly obvious there. And then abdomen actually just pulls in the abdomen. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and you can kind of see what's happening. Um, and that is, uh, for me, um, obviously it could be uh, used on someone like myself where I could use a little bit of pulling in on the abdomen, but it's also really good if the shirt is kind of bulky or sticking out, it allows you to kind of pull that in so that it doesn't look like the shirt is bunched up as much. So if I pull this in, you can see that to me doesn't look unnatural and it's pulled in the shirt a little bit. So pretty cool tool for using uh, for those kind of things. And body AI is, I think, a powerful tool. Now these are not new to Neo, but that's why I'm doing this overview series because many of you might be new to Neo in terms of using it for an editing uh, tool. So I'm just kind of walking through all this at a high level. And that leads me to high key, which is the last tool. And I'll just use this same photo. Now high key, as the name, uh, you may be familiar with high key, but it creates a very interesting and unique look that's kind of can be contrasty, kind of washed out, a little bit dramatic even. And so as I drag it to 100, you can kind of see what it does. And a lot of people use this for fashion portraits and things like that. It goes really well with monochromes as well. But you've got a lot of controls here that give you interesting and different kind of looks. Again, it just kind of depends on what it is that you like. I might want to pull the blacks down here a little bit. A bit. I've got a little bit of a more faded kind of look going. I can add some nice glow to this, maybe increase the contrast a little bit, maybe increase or decrease the saturation. And you can see the before and after. There it is before, very saturated, very warm, and now really washed out. It's got that kind of glow in the highlights and a little bit different contrast, but definitely more of a washed out look. So you can have a powerful impact on your portraits. And again, you can use this tool on really any kind of photo. It's generally, I think, used on portraits, but it's a powerful tool nonetheless. And so it's something that can make a huge impact on your images. If you're going for kind of a dramatic, I see this in kind of fine art portraits, you know, shots of models, things like that, where people are doing some interesting and unique kind of things. 
but that's an overview of the portrait tools. There are so many different and unique tools in Luminar that you can use a lot of these other tools up here in Creative and in the Essentials section, not to mention the Pro section, which I'll get to in the next video. You can use those in combination with all these portrait tools to really come up with some interesting and unique and creative outcomes. I'll be doing more videos about this. So if there's certain things you want me to cover, hit me up down below and I'll do my best to cover those. And that's it for this one, my friends. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, adios.